What's up, Promo? I'm Eduardo, and this is Monster Tutorials. Today we are making this tombstone. This is the Zero tombstone from the Nightmare Before Christmas, the one from Tim Burton. We're going to be making this, so let's just get started. The first step is the planning. Obviously, this is a more complicated project, so it requires measurements and stuff. So the first thing I did is I went on the internet and I did a search for the Zero tombstone. And I found a bunch of pictures, but I wanted the official picture. So I found a couple screenshots of the actual movie and I took one, blew it up and printed it out. So that combined with the ruler, I measured everything, height with all that good stuff, transferred it right there. Okay, so now I know how big the pieces of foam are going to be. Uh, the total height without the cross is going to be about a yard. So 90 centimeters, one yard. So it's going to be a decent sized tombstone. It's not going to be huge. It's not going to be tiny. It's going to be good sized. We put it on the in our graveyard, it'll look awesome. So next step, now that I got all the measurements here, I'm going to transfer them to some insulating foam. I got the blue kind at Lowe's and uh, let's cut the pieces out. This sheet barely fits in this studio. It's about eight feet long by about four foot wide, I think. All right, let's start measuring. Now, as you can see, this foam is four by eight, has taken over my whole studio. So I put the first two uh, designs right here, and all I need for to work on this is just that much. So I'm going to cut it right here, and this will make this a more manageable piece of foam. Now to cut this, I'm going to use the hot wire foam factory knife that they sent me. This is their industrial hot knife and it comes with various blades, which I will show you in a minute. So this heats up, cut across the foam, we're good to go. Now we're going to be cutting a lot of foam with the hot knife, which produces a ton of fumes. So make sure to use your respirator. And I also have my windows open with a fan. I don't have the fan on right now because it's really loud. But as soon as I start cutting, I'm going to put this on and turn the fan on. All right, this is a much more manageable piece. Look at this. So I've transferred the shape of the front and back. So I'm going to cut those out. going to use this piece to trace it over this piece to make the back of the house. Then we'll move on to the roof and everything else. I have all these pieces all cut out. And I've labeled them too because they are very similar. I don't want to confuse them. That's roof roof, wall and wall, and the front and back. Now before I assemble this, which I'm going to use uh, silicone, there are many like glues that you can use for foam. Uh, silicone is one of them. Uh, just make sure you test on the side because something like super glue will eat right through the foam. So you want to make sure you get a glue that does not eat through. Uh, first thing I'm going to do uh, that I forgot is to make that door the doorway of the tombstone, okay? Now I want to take a 10 second time out uh, to thank Hotwire Phone Factory because they sent me these tools. This video is not sponsored by them, but they did send me the industrial knife and this awesome tool here, which has a power regulator and has an engraver. 
it's a short tip and a slightly flexible wand that gets hot so that you can freehand your foam cuts. I'm doing this whole project using these tools and uh, I've used them before. Uh, they said they to be earlier in the year. And I absolutely love them. I recommend them. I'll put links below if you want to check them out or just go say hi to them. So that's what I'm using. And for cutting this doorway right here, we are going to use the thing. I don't know what the name of this is, but we're going to use this thing to freehand that curve. These tools plug right into the power adjuster thing that makes it hotter or, or not so hot. And uh, it brings power to this. So always test on a piece of scrap foam uh, to make sure that you got the heat right. You want this to be as cold as possible, but that still cuts through the foam. If it's too hot and you touch it, the foam will retract and you'll lose the shape because it'll eat it all up. So it needs to be just hot enough to cut right through it. As you can see, that is getting nice and hot, right? Very nice. Check this out. And just like that, the shape is cut, right? Let the tool do the work. Okay, don't force it, just be patient. It will slide right through. As you can see, the precision is amazing. So this part is done. We can assemble the basic house right now. And here are the pieces. So you gotta find the wall. I'm gonna use silicone to glue it. Just like that. Now to secure it, toothpick, put it right through the foam and into the other piece of foam. That will keep it nice and tight while the silicone sets. You can remove this afterwards or since these are inside of the house you just clip them off but leave the wood piece in there which adds to the strength of the tombstone. Right, let's do this wall and then the the back of the tombstone and we can let that set. Nice. I'll make sure to line them up. And then Toothpick, set it and forget it. That looks fantastic. It's nice and square. Check it out. It's not even wobbly. All right, let this set and then we'll move on to putting the roof panels. In the last piece of the roof now. Okay, well that set, I transferred my guest measurements from that plaque with the faces, their zero spaces, to this piece of paper here. Okay, I put all the measurements there. So now I'm going to cut this out. We're going to trace it, trace it on a piece of a, a foam and we're going to cut this face out. So let's see how that goes. I have this scrap piece of foam. This is the leftovers from when we punched out the doorway on the tombstone. And that is the perfect size to fit. All right. So let's trace this carefully. And then we can cut all the stuff out. This is the perfect job for the wand. Things 
space in here. Uh, I also went ahead and sketched and cut the two little bones that go under his face, right? So this part is done. We'll do the polishing later. Now I need to uh, fix a door onto the tombstone so we can fix this onto it. I have this piece of uh, scrap foam. I'm going to just slide it in and glue it from behind to seal the crypt. Put this in here. Let that dry. That is now dry. So I'm going to take the cutouts and glue them right there where you think they go. Okay? And we're just using silicone for that. That looks good. Let that dry too. For the roof tiles, I cut some strips of foam and these are four inches tall by about 25 inches wide. The 25 is how long the tombstone is. All right, uh, now these are real thick to, to be roof tiles. So I'm gonna cut them in half. So for that, I have rigged the knife, the industrial hot knife on the plane. This one that slides and put this blade across and the measurement there, the measurement there is a uh, half of a strip. I've also clamped my ruler here to stop this from sliding and we're just going to slice these guys in half. There you go. Now these are going to be the roof tiles. So that is the perfect width. I'm going to continue slicing these guys uh, the same way and uh, I'm also highlighting that tool which is awesome so that allows you to cut and slice as you need right and that comes with the industrial knife I got these guys all cut up so now I'm going to measure about every about four inches uh, across to make the roof tiles. I think I'm gonna go with five inches since this is 25 inches wide. And then just drawing roof tile. Just like that. I'm going to stagger them too so they're not perfectly lined up, instead they're like alternating. Okay, just like you do like on a brick wall. See, they are staggered. Now remember, this is a Tim Burton inspired prop. So there's no straight lines, there's no right angles, there's nothing. So the more organic the look, the better it will look. I finished cutting these guys out. So I got that one and I got the one with the staggered look, right? So they're not matching. I started test fitting them here on the roof and they're held with toothpicks because I want to get the spacing correct. That looks right. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. And we calculate it correct because I have five, six, seven for the other side. So I'm going to start gluing these with the silicone right now. Just kind of hold them there with the toothpicks, uh, let it dry, do the same on the other side. Now let's do the same to this side. I have finished both sides uh, while it sets. Taking this piece of uh, foam as a strip, I'm going to put it on top of the roof as a ridge cap. That, if you put this outdoors, it'll keep the water from getting under here, even though it's sealed. 
and that's what the picture looks like the tombstone has. Right, that looks great. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put two strips right here. See, if we look at the reference here, there appears to be a ridge cap there, so that's what this is. And then there appear to be two pieces right here, right? And then we have the cross and we have this little piece sticking out right here. So that's what I'm doing right now, finishing all these details. This two right here, I'm going to do in the back as well. So I've cut the four strips. I'm just going to glue them right there, one on each side. And then we'll trim and sculpt everything after we are done gluing them. So these things are glued, as you can see, They're nice and solid. So now we start the finishing work. For that, I'm using a combination of sandpaper, and this is wrapped around a, like a beer koozie, like that. We're going to take a lot of those hard edges off. I'm also using my trusty Dremel, but very carefully because this eats through that foam like nothing. And I'm basically rounding up all these harsh edges. Uh, these corners I'm going to sculpt round, so I'll be doing a little more sanding there than the rest. And uh, But the main edges like this, they're going to be just uh, rounded just a little bit. Uh, then I'm going to have to do all the tiles one by one. So I'm not going to bore you with it, I'm going to show you a couple shots of me doing it. But that's what I'm going to be doing for the next long time. And I'm going to be covered in foam. So make sure you wear a mask if you use something like the Dremel tool. much as I can to the finishing of this tombstone here. I mean you can do more, you can spend days on it, but I think I'm good at this point. So right now that all the smoothing and sanding is done, we still have the issue that this foam is super smooth, right? It doesn't look like stone. So we're going to texturize it and for that we're going to use a heat gun. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to show some close-ups, but if you do nothing, you end up with a smooth, smooth surface, right? If you use just heat, it starts getting a little bit of a texture like stone, but still kind of smooth, right? If you spray it with water, then you get a really powerful texture, but it's a little too much, right? Each one of those bubbles right there is when there was a drop of water, okay? So that drop of water insulated the heat, so everything else shrank except right there, so it gives you that. And my preferred method, which is nice and rough, I'll show you a close-up, is uh, spray with water, wipe the excess off so that there's a thin, thin layer of, of moisture on the foam, and then we hit it with a heat gun, and that gives you that finish. So I'm going to do that to the whole tombstone, okay? So I'm not going to bore you showing you the whole thing, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what I do. Oh, and this might release some fumes since you're heating the foam, so use your respirator, okay? Oh yes, and while you are not looking, I also cut this cross out of the piece of foam, and that's going to go up here with a toothpick and some silicone caulk. Now, while I do all that tedious work right now, I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you to all my patrons from Patreon. It's because of you that I can get the materials for tutorials like this one. The foam, a lot of the tools is thanks to you. And if you're interested in becoming a patron on my Patreon, please consider visiting this address, which is patreon.com slash tutorials. And uh, there's benefits. I mean, you guys get stickers and some other things. You guys get to see some of the videos before everybody else. So if you're interested in supporting this channel, head over there. And okay, let's go back to that tutorial. Let's go. All right, so that turned out really cool. I like the rougher texture when it was a little bit wetter, so I changed my mind and made it 
like that rough as you saw in the video. Uh, this is a prop that's going to be seen from a distance away so the texture will go a long way. Besides we're going to cover it with paint so some of the texture will be lost with the paint. So if you exaggerate a little bit this texture it'll work better. Now let's go get some paint. I'm getting ready to paint now so I'm using this exterior or Duramax high hiding paint and primer which is all weather adhesion and uh, this is oops paint from Lowe's so it was nine bucks for this gallon of this high quality paint that happens to be great so you can use a brush just brush it on but I'm going to use the famous super cheap airbrush from Harbor Freight uh, if you don't have a Harbor Freight near you I've added a link below where you can get a similar or the same airbrush uh, for the airbrush mix I'm using that paint two-thirds and one-third water just to thin it out so it fits through the tiny little hole right that water will dry and uh, what I like about the airbrush it will get in all the nooks and crannies of the tombstone and then since it's a very thin layer it captures all the detail now because it's a thin layer uh, you'll be able to see through it so you may have to do uh, multiple coats let's get started Hey, prop mob, this thing is nice and dry. I just need to touch up the parts where I missed some spots, but I totally forgot the name, zero. So I'm gonna scribble it in with pencil, and then I'm going to grind it out with the Dremel tool. That looks good. Uh, to get the dark areas I have mixed one-third black latex paint and two-thirds water so it's like a stain and I'm just going to mist the whole thing with this mixture so it gives it this shady look so it starts giving it that 3d look now if you put too much you can just wipe off the excess with a paper towel on the parts that you think should be highlighted like if you do the top just wipe this off I'm gonna do this all around the tombstone So this shading is now done. It looks really cool. It looks 3D, but now we need to do the highlights, okay? So for that, I'm using some white, uh, this is latex paint. I just put it in this jar because the can was getting rusty. And I'm going to use a sponge brush, and then we're going to just make a really dry brush, like not a whole lot of paint on it. So get a little bit of this white paint. I'm going to get it on this brush then get the excess all the way off until it doesn't paint anymore. We're going to start brushing over the relief, right? So it catches only the highlights. See that? It's perfect. As you can see, all the texture starts popping out perfectly. That looks great. Let's set it up. That's how you make Zero's tombstone. I think it turned out awesome. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If 
you haven't subscribed, you should because this is the kind of stuff we do here. Again, I'm Eduardo Talbert, you, me, all of us, we are the Prop Mob. And this is Monster Tutorials. I'll see you on the next one.